during one of our coaching sessions, you were like, you need to be unrealistic. Realistic goals are not it. And I remember it just ringing in the back of my mind. And I was like, you know what? I work at a nine to five job where I make this much, right? I think I'm definitely more valuable than how much I'm making right now. I'm at nine to five. The reason why I'm starting my business is because I really want to like get to that next level. How can I get to that next level if I'm always working at the prices that are going to take me a few steps back. Welcome to the Elizabeth Yang Show, where we explore the benefits of diverse leaders expanding your brand authority online to create massive impact and happy sales. Now, let's dive in because your legendary life is waiting. Hi there, it's Elizabeth. I'm really excited to have you meet someone today. Her name is Nancy Cha, and she is owner and founder of NC Creative strategies. She has an amazing story to share with you that I think you will find very inspirational. If you are starting out a business or just really trying to figure out like, how do I juggle so many businesses? So hi, Nancy. Thanks for joining me today. Hi, Elizabeth. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm really excited to talk to you because you have been just such a rock star in the last 12 weeks, not just for the results that you've created, but really the belief that you have grown in yourself. So before we dive into all that, just tell us a little bit about who you are and what your business is all about. Yeah. So of course, my name is Nancy. I joined the Social Sales Accelerator representing my business, NC Creative Strategies. NC Creative Strategies is a creative agency I founded in October of 2022, which is right around the time I joined the Accelerator, with the vision to help growing businesses and innovative brands bring their story to life through creative media and experimental marketing. That's great. So there's so many different creative agencies. Like who is the ideal person that you would work with? You know, I feel like for me, I've obviously had a lot of experience in the past working with a lot of C-level executives. That was kind of like what I did during my nine to five job. I just worked with a lot of those folks and supporting them. I've really seen how they've really grown in their roles and how they're able to accomplish everything they wanted. And I feel like for me starting my business now, I really wanted to focus on helping people do that. Not just anybody, of course, but growing businesses, growing entrepreneurs who are like myself, people who really want to get to that next level. But you know, they might not be able to because they don't have that creative eye or the time to do so, or even like they probably don't even have like the time to really create effective strategies in order to really get to, yeah, where they want to be. And so for me, I'm really focused on helping my clients really get from a small mom and pop shop to something as big as like hy V or going from a small tech shop at Rosedale Mall to becoming like the next Apple. And I really dream big for myself and my clients, and I want them to dream just as big. And working with a lot of C-level executives, I really wanted to be able to help them get there because I feel like I can really help them get there with my expertise. I love that. So it sounds like you love a dreaming big with your clients, looking at their big vision picture. And when they hire you, you really help them almost break down that vision into projects. And you really bring a creative and project management lens to the details to help keep it together for them is what I'm hearing. Is that right? Yes, for sure. That's so key for growth is to make sure that your vision, when you execute it, that those details line up to the bigger picture and the bigger vision. And so I love that you have really stepped into this and seeing your growth in this accelerator has been so amazing. We're going to get into that in just a little bit here. And and I love, I have to say that you do bring such a creative flair to just not only like the aesthetics and the visuals, but like all the details to the key project, to that bigger picture. You're like the integrator of all that creativeness and making sure it's in sync. Yes. <laughs> it's up with the beautiful bottle and you're like, it's in sync. It looks good. It's on brand. It's on, it's on point to that vision is what I'm hearing. Yeah. No, I feel like I'm definitely that person. You know, I'm definitely known for my attention to detail and how precise I am and how I'm really strict on like if I give myself a timeline, I'm going to meet that timeline, like no matter what. And so it's like all those little things that people don't pay attention to, but I feel like I'm really strong in organization. And so like all those things that come together, you really do have to focus like on all those little details that will really bring 
like someone's vision to life or a project to make it a masterpiece. I love that. Cause I think a lot of business owners or even C-suites, they're really great at the visionary picture and they need someone who can help manage the execution because vision without execution is just a dream, right? Yeah. But a vision 100%. with strong execution is really building a brand that is going to be memorable and make a difference in people's lives. So I love that. That's awesome. All right. So let's rewind a little bit to where you were at 12 weeks ago, because 12 weeks ago, you had multiple business. You also were in a nine to five, right? <laughs> Roll as well. And I was like, Nancy, what are you doing? You got so much going on. You play. <laughs> What would you say you were struggling with in your business prior to us working together? Well, even when I submitted my application to you, I had like NC Creative Strategies, which I was like in the process of like officially launching. I still had Cha events on the side, holding it, holding on to it. Like it was my baby. It was my first business. So I didn't want to let it go. And then I just got my real estate license. So I was just starting my career there. And so I think one of my biggest struggles was really figuring out like, how I was going to do this. And when I joined the accelerator, I wanted to join with my NC Creator Strategies business because I know you were like, Nancy, like this is, this is where your strengths are. Like, this is what you need to do. And so I was like, okay, like I'm going to go in with NC Creator Strategies, but I don't even know where to start. Like it was like so new. I didn't even have like a sales structure, like put down yet. I didn't even know who my clientele was really going to be. It was still like really fresh, still an idea just got it registered. And so no pricing, no packaging. You're like, I don't even know what I'm going to be offering to sell. Yeah. Honestly, I started from ground zero and not only that, I didn't have a lot of confidence too. So it was an idea and I didn't know like who would actually be interested in this, if it would actually work. And so again, this is like me having to put a bet on myself and my skills. And so at the time I was like, I know I'm really good. I just don't know if I can communicate that over to other folks and get them interested in working with me. So those were things that I was definitely struggling with prior to working with you. <laughs> During that time, right before you were going to apply, what was it that made you decide to apply to work with me? So it was actually at the time I was like, you know, getting more involved in the community. And I actually met up with Yao and I had a meeting with her. And of course, Yao, she works for the Minnesota Home Chamber of Commerce. So I just had a meeting with her and I was kind of telling her about what I did. I was like, I'm an entrepreneur. This is what I do. And she was just like, have you heard about the Social Sales Accelerator? I think you should join. And I remember, honestly, I like, I knew me and you were friends on Facebook. So I've seen like you post about it, but at the time, like I even like, I think it was like back in September, I wasn't too, too engaging. I wasn't too, too involved in social media. So I didn't really know what was going on specifically. So whenever I saw like your post, I'll just kind of scroll past it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, honestly, that's just me, how I am back then on social media. And so when Yael was telling about me about it, she was like, the application's due tomorrow. So if you want to like sign up, do it now. And at the time I was like, okay, my business is so new and there was so much that I wanted to do and so much I wanted to accomplish. And I feel like right around that time was also around the same time when I was like, I want to change my life. And I think that's what just really, with, especially with the decision to like, I need to apply like by tomorrow. I was like, I'm going to do it. Cause I know like no matter what, I knew I'm like a sponge. So any information that or anything I get myself into, I know I will learn from. And so I was like, I just have to do it. <laughs> Talk to me. Did you have any objections at all? Like, oh my gosh, Elizabeth, like I, I was scrolling past her, her newsfeed, her posts. Like, what can I learn from her? Did you have any objections that were going on in your head? Or you were just like, nope, I just need to do this. Whatever and everything, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Well, in terms of like objections, I don't think I had like too, too many. Cause I think at the time I was just like, and then like the growth mindset, like I just wanted to grow and it didn't matter what, like I knew like the program, like I, from like your advertising of it, honestly, I, after Yao told me about it, I went on your page and I was looking at it and I was like, oh, okay. Like I seemed like, oh, so, yeah. I didn't feel like <laughs> I had like too, too many objections, but I feel like as I was looking at the application, something that made me rethink if I really wanted to apply was, I know one of the requirements is that you needed to be two years in the business in order to join. And I, I felt like, oh man, like I'm underqualified. Like I'm joining with NC Creator Strategies. And I was like, I don't really have any numbers to show. And so I was afraid that, of course, like it was going to be disappointing because I was still so new and I was still in the learning process that 
Like it was going to be disappointing in the sense that like we wouldn't really see results. And so that was like something that made me rethink the applying process, of course. And then also the time commitment. It was like the two and a half hours every week and then the coaching sessions for an hour long every other week. And so for me, juggling between like real estate and this business, really trying to get both businesses up and running and getting more involved in other programs and organizations as well. It just took up a lot of time and I was really nervous about that, but because I wanted it so bad, I was like, I'm going to make it work. (laughs) Well, I just really love the fact that you saw the requirement, which was like two, two and a half years of being in business. And you knew that you didn't meet that requirement, but you're like, I'm just going to apply anyways. Yeah. And and then you got in, you got it in. Was <laughs> so and I think it's just such a, a powerful story that I hope we can inspire people in is that, you know what, when you want it bad enough, even if you don't technically meet the requirement, you just got to show up and just say what you said in your application. And I just remember reading your application. And even though you didn't necessarily meet the number of years in business in terms of two years. I just remember there was so much hunger in it. And remember how we were going back and forth and I emailed you and I said, hey, we're considering your application, but you got three businesses, girl. So which one are you going to focus on? Because I just want you focused on one. And you were yeah. just so not sure. And when you came back and you're like, I'm just want to focus on NC creative strategies. And I was like, okay, then we'll just do that. It was that hunger. And I think this is such a beautiful lesson for anyone that catches this is that do not opt yourself out that you just never know who is reading one's application. Yours was very hungry in that you were very detailed and very specific. There were other applications where they just put in like three words. It's <laughs> not like they're just like, I just need to submit this and get it over with, right? And so mm-hmm. on the receiving end, I read through a lot of applications. You could start to see like who's really truly interested in this and they really believe it's going to benefit them and who's just kind of like, so Mm -hmm. to me that was the big thing so that I think was a key lesson that I hope that you'll carry over to (laughs) don't count yourself out just because you don't meet all the requirements just show up say what you got to say say it like you mean it like you want it bad enough because you just never know never know (laughs) who's on the other side because they're not just looking at you they're looking at you in comparison to all the applicants. And even though there were others that had at least two years of business, I mean, their applications were like, it just seemed like, I don't even know what you want out of this. It just became very clear. So anyways, Mm -hmm. I just thought that was a really great lesson that I appreciate that so much that you can carry with you. And for those that are watching. So, all right. So obviously lots of learning about, (laughs) even though you don't meet all the requirements, just raise your hand and apply. What have you learned about yourself with us working together in the last 12 weeks? I think the biggest thing was earlier, I said, when I started the program, I felt like I didn't have a lot of confidence. And honestly, I don't know if you remember, but a lot of our first sessions when I would speak would be like, Elizabeth, I don't have a lot of confidence. Like, how do you get that? You know, through the program, I realized like, hey, I actually do have a lot of confidence because I was making like really like bold decisions, like bold moves some that were unrealistic even. And I realized like, hey, I do have the confidence. I just needed to put myself in situations where I can actually bring that out. And so I think that was something that I really learned about myself. Good. Yeah. Can we we just pause there for just a moment? Because I just want to make sure that people are hearing this. In the beginning, you thought you didn't have confidence. So what do you think it was? Or what made you realize that? Because I think that's just a powerful insight for people to hear. Yeah. Well, I think for me, like I've just always been that person that followed the rules. Going like to my corporate job, like I would just go to work and do what it is that I've been told. All the things that I found myself doing was really mindless work and things that I didn't really like have to think too much because it just became second nature to me. And so I think with starting my business, like I've had to really had to, I really had to think. And I think what made me realize this was during one of my first pitches to my first client, I created a whole PowerPoint. And I remember doing my presentation and just going through it. And I obviously was like shaking. I'm not even lying. Like I was like, oh my gosh, hope I relaying all the information correctly. And it came to a point where I was talking in circles and I think I confused her a little bit. And so she was asking me this question and she was like, she did challenge me a little bit. Why do you think this way? I feel like it should be like this. And I just remembered like being like, 
okay, I didn't have to follow the script anymore. This is a question that I didn't prepare for. And so, because <laughs> you like, like being like wanting to go to law school, I'm like one of those folks that really do a lot of damage control. So I think of every situation that could go wrong and I prepare for it. And yeah. when my client asked me this question, I honestly wasn't prepared for it. And so I had to really be like, you know what? This is why, like, not saying that you're wrong, but this is why I think this is the better, this yeah. is why I think we should, the better path, the better solution. And I really had to tell her like, hey, this is what it is. And this is why you should trust me. And I feel like at the time I was like, yeah, like I am the right person for this. And I had to really channel that energy, which I didn't know I had. <laughs> and so, yeah, I think, and that that's what really sold her. And she was like, okay. Like, I could see that you are the right person for this. You do have that. And you do know what you're talking about. Yeah. So it sounds to me like you realize that you do have this confidence. You just have been such a rule follower for so long that now with this new path, it sounded like maybe you were just uncertain because you were embarking on this new path of like, you haven't done this before. It's so crazy. And we're going to talk about ridiculous goals in a little bit, but you're just like, oh my God, it's so nervous that you just weren't sure. So it's not like you just weren't certain because you weren't really stepping outside of your comfort zone. And that made you feel and believe like you just lacked confidence, but it wasn't so much lacking confidence. It was just, you were uncomfortable about being so outside of your comfort zone is what it sounds like. Yeah. I think that's exactly it. Yeah. And I think that's such a powerful lesson because People often say they think it's a lack of confidence, but it's just trusting yourself that you don't have to have everything figured out, that you don't have to prepare and have all the answers to every single possibility and question before you can show up with confidence, but rather you just have to trust in yourself and have faith in yourself that when you're put on the spot, you're going to just show up and you did. We're going to talk about results in a little bit, but what would you say you are the most proud of for yourself? The most proud, I would say in how much I grew. Like I, I feel like I'm so different from the Nancy that I was like five months ago or like three months ago than I am like today. Like I feel like I can walk into a room and be able to talk more about my business and what I do and relay that in confidence, <laughs> even though I might like laugh a little bit because I feel like that's just my personality, but I feel like, yeah, the growth these past 12 weeks have been phenomenal for me. You are such a different person now than you were day one when I first met you. I think that confidence <laughs> is really there and just like owning it, like that ownership over like, I got this, I'm going to figure it out, you know, and mm -hmm. that's very contagious in a very good way. I love that. Yeah. I'm really proud of you too. Congratulations. When you think about the last 12 weeks in the program, what would you have to say is your favorite part? The people, the wins, the cohort, the structure, like what is your favorite part about the program? Oh, I, I would say my favorite part about the program was when everyone really shared their wins with each other. I mean, there's some weeks when I was like, oh man, like I didn't really do anything, but celebrating others' wins, it felt like mine. And I feel like when you are around entrepreneurs who are like yourself, there's just like that, that camaraderie, if that makes sense, like their wins are your wins and you're happy for them. And like, they're happy for my wins as well. And so I love that. And it just motivated me, like hearing other, other folks who are further along, even really making those wins motivated me, even though I was so new in my business and I had so much to go learning from them and really like taking that energy and applying it in my business and really, really growing it and getting wins for myself was just amazing. And that's, that's my biggest thing about this whole program that I love the most. I love celebrating. I mean, you and I both have very bubbly personalities. I'm like, yay, <laughs> which I'm cheering you on. And I really love celebrating because I think to your point, like, you're so happy for them. And there is some psychology behind that. Cause I often said this is that when you celebrate those wins, you're training your mind that you want more of that. I want more of that, even if it's yours or even if it's theirs. And mm -hmm. it's so powerful because their wins, even though, like you said, I didn't do anything this week, but their wins motivate you because it's almost like, ah, this is possible if I just do the work, <laughs> if I just find time, like it's possible for me too. So yeah. I love that. That's a really beautiful like favorite moment. Cause I love celebrating <laughs> any reason to celebrate makes me happy too. Mm -hmm. So let's dig into results. Oh my goodness, Nancy, you talk about like 
on point, like you have had some amazing breakthroughs and results since we started working together. What results have you been able to create and what have I helped you produce in just literally the last 12 months? I mean, you literally stepped into this cohort with just a newly started business. So what results have you generated and created for yourself? Yeah. So, I mean, I think the first one was I started my business with like, I felt like really nothing. Even for myself, I didn't really feel like I had a lot of marketing experience. And so I was like, okay, like, how do I even structure this? And even with my, again, my child events business, even though I did have a business prior, I never used that classy framework structure that you taught us, like how to, how to make sales, how to really structure your business, like creating that CEO schedule, putting time aside to actually make those sales happen to really grow your business beyond a certain point. Again, my business was so fresh that it was still an idea. And I really like throughout the program, I was like, oh man, I really need to write a business plan so that I can really sell. And so that was something that I've been developing and something that I have, I feel like I have a a better idea of what it is that like a better idea of how to price myself, the type of product I'm selling. And so <laughs> that was something that I really made stronger throughout the 12 weeks working with you. The other thing was my social media presence. And so I know when I first started with you, I probably only had like at most four, not even 400 friends on Facebook. I wasn't really as active on Facebook and active with the posting, but I know through the program, you mentioned that we need to take messy action. Like we just got to do it. You're always waiting for things to be perfect. It's too slow. And so I knew I wanted to grow my social media presence so that I can really, again, if I'm going to be a marketer and I feel like if I don't have a great social media, like who's going to really like trust me. And especially when I felt like I didn't have too much marketing experience to give. And so that was something that I've been working on. And I grew my social media from 400 friends. I mean, I switched it over. I redid everything on my page, switch it all up. And so it has grown from, what is it? The 400 friends to now 1100 followers, which I feel like is a big one for me at least because I never fully felt active on social media. And then another big win for me was, again, not really knowing how to price myself, right? And I remember from one of my conversations, I was like, Elizabeth, do I price myself at $2,000 per project? And I remember you being like, no, $2,000 too low. You sh- it should be at 5000 But if you're nervous, start at three. <laughs> and I remember going into my first meeting with my client being like, okay, like I was going to start at the 2000 mark, but I was like, you know what? Like, let's do $3,000 for this project. But then I remember during one of our coaching sessions, I mean, I closed that deal, of course. And during one of our coaching sessions, you were like, you need to be on, you need to be unrealistic, like realistic goals are not it. And I remember it just kind of like ringing the back of my mind. And I was like, you know what? Like, I work at a nine to five job where I make this much, right? And like, I think this is like how, like the, I think I'm definitely more valuable than how much I'm making right now. I'm a nine to five. Like, I feel like I should at least like, the reason why I'm starting my business because I really want to like get to that next level. And so I was like, how can I get to that next level if I'm always like working at the prices that are going to take me a few steps back? And so the second deal I closed, I was being really unrealistic for me at least. But again, I closed my second deal at $20,000 and um, exciting for me. (laughs) So awesome. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. I think this is such a beautiful lesson to be learned about really how you went from didn't know how to sell, don't even know what my price is and what I'm going to be selling $0 to your first client being $3,000 when you wanted to go lower. And I was like, nope, go to five. You don't feel comfortable with five, do three. You took crazy, messy (laughs) courage and action. You closed that deal. And then you took crazy, ridiculous, unrealistic goals. And you're like, oh, and you closed your second at $20,000. That's huge. And congratulations for just being unrealistic and really owning that. Because as you know, I've been saying to every single one of you, and I just want to share this with those that are watching and hearing your story too, is that the reason why I don't believe in realistic goals is because why, Nancy? Why do? Why is it that I say don't make realistic goals? You really limit yourself to like a certain standard. And 
I feel like that really applied for myself, which is why I was like, you know what, I can't limit myself to this. And I really just shot for, or, you know, I know this isn't the stars, but what like, like very different from what I had before. Absolutely. Because our realistic goal, like I love what you said, it limits you because it's all based on what your, your comfort zone. It's your current paradigm. It's what you've always known. It's what you're so comfortable sort of wiggling into your comfort zone. And when a goal is set that feels very unrealistic, that's how you know that you're reaching outside of your comfort zone. That's how you know that it feels so ridiculous and unrealistic where you're like, yeah, I'm really outside of my comfort zone. And so now I just need to rise up and step and own and step outside of my comfort zone. And that's why I don't believe in setting realistic goals because what sounds realistic to you means that you're barely even on the edge of like breaking out of your little, your comfort zone shell. And you really need to do that because then that's the only way you're going to do that. And I am just super duper proud of you for that, Nancy, because you just showed that when you are unrealistic, you raise the standard for yourself and you grew into that. And if you had been realistic, this is, I share this, but realistic people would have been like, I'm going to start at 2000 for my first client. And then my second client, maybe 3000. And then my third client, maybe 5,000. And it would have taken you maybe six months to even get to $5,000. And it may have taken you even a year to get to $20,000. Right. Mm -hmm. And just imagine that you just did this literally in what, like nearly like two and a half months. Like, I just want people to see why it's so important for us to set quote, unrealistic goals, because you grow into them, you grow. Mm -hmm. And I'm super duper proud of you for taking on that challenge. And just congratulations, Nancy, for that. It's huge. Thank you so much. That means so much to me, seriously. (laughs) And the last thing I'll say about that too, is that our income potential is not logically incremental. And you're the perfect example of when they say that your success is 100% your mindset of that because a realistic person would have set income goal 2000 3000 5000 oh i need to be realistic next month next month i'll do 5000 next year i'll do 20000 and you just totally quantum leap that like went from don't know how to sell zero to your mm-hmm. first 3000 i'm not kidding you like that's huge because some clients in business can't even get to 3000 and it's been 3 4 years let alone 20000 and you just leapfrogged in two and a half months <laughs> okay because you are being unrealistic and just, this is why the power of being unrealistic and knowing that goals are not what you get, but goals are what you grow into. As long as you allow yourself to really do the deep work, to rise up to that, to grow into that goal is that your income potential is limitless. As long as you continue to just pour into yourself and say, how can I grow into that? 20K, 30K, 50K, right? Our income potential makes no incremental sense. It just, there's no rationale. As employees, we're so used to our performance raises happening once a year, anywhere from one to 3% increase. And we're so used to that training that we think as an entrepreneur that we have to do that. And we don't. Your income growth has no logic to it. It's just ridiculous. You are the cause of sales and the effect. So congratulations again. That's just amazing. How did you feel after you closed that deal for $20,000? Like I was completely shook it. <laughs> I think that's like the perfect word to describe this. I was out, like I was really sick. Like I caught the flu for, and I was out for like two weeks. And I mean, I would like do research, but I didn't really put my PowerPoint presentation together until the night before. And I remember we had class too. And so coming to class, I was like super nervous. I was like, oh man, like, how am I going to do this? But it was like that constant like preparation. And I think I just really had to channel this energy inside of me. Like, this is like who I like want to be. Like, I really need to like, be there. And I think that our one class session right before the actual like presentation for me just really helped me like build up that confidence to really go in and close the sale. And it just felt so unreal because I was like, how did I just close a $20,000 deal? And that's just like, that doesn't even include like the budget that they're going to be willing to spend to actually bring this marketing idea to life. It just felt so unreal to me, but I think it's because of that constant nurturing with this client, like just letting them know, sharing like in my PowerPoint, just sharing with them, like what I saw for them, what I know I can do for them and letting them see the same vision. 
made it all happen. And it just felt great. And I know I messaged you right away after like, how did I do that? It's like, no, I know what you mean by happy sales. Elizabeth, now I know what you mean by happy sales. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> that was me. Yeah. This is not like the, the money is there, but it's like, who did you finally become to close that type of deal? Mm-hmm. And that's the being that is really the happy part. It's not just happy because you got money in the bank, but it's really like, who did I have to become in order to be confident or be that way in order to close that level of a deal? It just blew me away. I was like, Nancy, do you know how long it took me to close for a <laughs> And so congratulations to you. You should be super proud of yourself for being that. And I, and I love what you said. It was being unreal. It felt unreal because you aren't yet there. But now that you've done it, you do it once, you can do it again. And I say that to you too, right? It was like, don't believe for a moment that it was a fluke. It was luck. You did it once, you could do it again. We always have that fear or self-talk that comes in. It's like, oh my God, was I just lucky? And they're like, no. Like you hear that noise, shut that voice down. Be like, nope, nope. Preparation met opportunity. I rose up. I am, I am her. I am the woman, the CEO boss is closing $20,000 deals. That's me now. It's not a fluke. It's not by accident. It's not by luck, right? Seriously. And I could have done it though, if I didn't have you in my corner, like I already know that. (laughs) And you also, what? With your nine to five. Yeah. So of course, like when I first joined and I was like typing up my application, I was like, Elizabeth, I really want to quit like my nine. I'm going to be quitting my nine to five suits. I really want help and really getting all this stuff like figured out. And once I closed that $20,000 deal, Elizabeth, that just like confirmed it for me. I know. And I was like, okay. Congratulations to that Thank too. You. So, I mean, you quit your nine to five. Today's mm-hmm. actually your last days we're recording this. And yeah. you're all in. You're all in betting on Nancy Cha and NC mm-hmm. strategies. Oh, well, and congratulations to you. Share with the audience a little bit about what have you learned with the difference between digital marketing and social selling? Because, I mean, you said it before, you were barely even on social media. And in just the last 12 weeks, you've learned so much. What are you learning is really the difference for you? Yeah. So I feel like before with Cha events, I definitely tried digital marketing for sure. Cha events was like my luxury event planning business. And so I felt like when I first launched my product, I think this is how I figured out, like I actually have a knack for marketing was because when I first launched, it generated so much traction, right? To like my business. And that was where I almost reached my 1K, the followers right away. And I, I knew like people were interested and people were messaging me. And so I felt like I didn't actually have to do the sale. Like it just came. And at the time I was doing some digital marketing for like two months just to kind of see like, okay, like how effective is digital marketing? And I did that. And I mean, like there was people that was messaging me, but deals would just fall through just because of course, like they would hear my prices and they would be like, oh, okay. Like, I think that's a little bit too much for me. And they would just let it go. And I think something I've learned about sales through you is that nurturing through the classy sales structure. Part of it is like the nurturing process. And then, you know, all the way to like the closing of the sale. And I think that was something that I had to really develop here throughout the 12 weeks was how to actually do a sale and do it properly and how like to really nurture those relationships so that they like are willing, they do like, they can see your potential as much as you do and how you can really get them there. And I think because I was so familiar with people coming to me, like in my chat business, that I never really set aside time on my calendar to actually do the sale. But then as a part of NC Creative Strategies, like I didn't really build a platform. I just kind of launched it because I was like, oh, I just need to get my business out there. I didn't really have a social media plan, a really big launch, like how I did with my other business. So then I knew I needed to get the clients in. I knew I needed to actually schedule time in my calendars to actually do the sales, to actually nurture those relationships, to get the deals. And I think that's played a major role in me making that $20,000 deal. That's huge. And for those clients that you did close with your new business, did they say you're too expensive? They didn't. No. Isn't that crazy? People always say to me, they're like, Elizabeth, I've been hearing too much of like, you're too expensive, you're too expensive. But I think this is a lesson for you. But also I know that you nailed this, but like other people too, is that when it comes to sales, like what the point of closing the deal where they're going to, you know, give you their credit card by that point, there should not be a, you're too expensive. They already know like either 
I can afford you or I can't. Like you're that good. Either I can afford you or I can't. And that's okay. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, and that I think that's such an important lesson for for you to share your own journey of knowing the difference between just marketing and posting on social versus social selling and actually having a structure, time set aside and like learning a structure to close a deal, how to nurture, because that's exactly it. And I know that I teach this and I know that I say this often, but when it comes to pricing objections, your marketing does 80% of the work. And 20% is just really closing. And too many people wait until the last minute of the transaction to really overcome that pricing objection. And you're the prime example of, hey, like 20K, they didn't even blink an eye. I remember I asked, I said, how quickly did they say yes? Because if they said it too quickly, we could have gone a little bit higher. But that's a conversation <laughs> for a different day. <laughs> right? So, yeah. So as we begin to wrap up, because you and I can chat forever, right? Like, what advice would you give to those who maybe are on the fence about working with me or joining a program like this? Like what advice would you give? What would you tell the people that are on the fence? Honestly, I would just tell them to do it. I feel like if they're even thinking about doing it, I feel like that's a good indicator that they are wanting more just because again, like me joining, I knew like, okay, like this is going to help me grow. And I feel like if they're thinking about it. They are looking for that growth. This is definitely a great place to be, to definitely grow. So yeah, I'll tell them to do it. It's definitely worth it. And again, like it was generously offered from the Minnesota Hmong Chamber of Commerce and Hmong American Partnership. So like it just, there just wasn't any reason why like I shouldn't, I wouldn't have done this. So I just really want to give a big thank you to you, Elizabeth, um, Minnesota Hmong Chamber of Commerce and Hmong American Partnership for really giving me this opportunity to grow, right? And show me that my dreams are limitless. And I know I wouldn't be where I am today in my business if it wasn't through this program. Awesome. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And then last question, where can people find you online? Oh, yes. So feel free to follow my Facebook page, NC Creative Strategy Smarter Business. And I also have my personal public page as well, Nancy Chuax. So C-H-E-A-U-X that they can follow me there to get in touch as well. Okay. Well, all right. Wishing you nothing but success. You're the epitome of really just showing up, being consistent, and just frequently just putting in the work. I always say, put in the reps, put in the reps, like do it over again. And you really took that to heart. And so I just wish you nothing but the best. So thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> if you are leaving this episode, feeling inspired to up-level online and make happy sales happen, be sure to hit the subscribe button. So you never miss an episode. Now go out and take those steps to build your legendary life.